Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Dana Knowles. I am uh, Vice President of Growing Business uh, and Corporate Advancement here at the Tallahassee Chamber of Commerce. And with me today is Keith Bowers from the Small Business Development Center. And we are, um, he is going to provide you guys with some resources and information in regards to um, disaster recovery and items that the SBDC has put into place um, due to COVID-19. Um, Keith, thanks so much for joining us and sharing your information, and I'm going to let you go ahead and take it away. Okay, thank you, Dana. Um, first of all, I would like to, um, to thank the Chamber for putting this together, and I think it is um, you know, very important that all of the, the listeners understand completely what resources are available for small businesses here in our community. So um, with that, I will get started. So the um, Florida Small Business Development Center here at Florida A&M, we are part of a disaster recovery team that assists businesses in the time of any natural or man-made disasters. Um, we do this in, in conjunction with the state of Florida and their um, um, disaster recovery team efforts. Um, we do it also in conjunction with the Florida um, Department of Economic Opportunity and through SBA. So one of the things that we try to do um, when small businesses are impacted, especially now with the coronavirus, is that we are the first responders for businesses. We provide assistance, technical assistance in completing um, the applications for um, disaster relief. We also provide continuity services for those businesses, whether um, they find themselves without um, infrastructure or without the ability to um, communicate. Um, so we are on the front line for disaster relief. So let's talk about the functions of, of what the um, the team does. It, we're, we're basically here to support the business by responding and helping them um, recover after disasters. So the, one of the most important parts of it is, and I know that the chamber has done a great job of trying to assess the damages. Um, and that is very important because um, complete those surveys because we use that information, roll that information up to um, build a case for federal um, assistance and federal disaster um, declarations. So on, uh, as, a, as it relates to the coronavirus, the state of Florida has already been um, designated and all of the country has been designated um, as a uh, federal disaster. However, being able to get this information to the chamber helps us really pinpoint if there are any gaps in the services that, that um, are needed for small businesses. Since you're on the front line, um, you are in a better position to tell us where those gaps exist. And then we use that information to try to um, bring resources to bridge that gap. So we assist with the, as I mentioned, with our partners. And one of the areas that we, um, that is probably the most popular right now is the Florida Small Business Emergency Bridge Loan Program. This program is, is administered by, um, well, it, the, the start of the program, Governor DeSantis uh, declares a state of, declared a state of an emergency in March of 9th of this year. And we basically started the uh, business assessment, the damage assessment on the 13th. And then um, on March 16th, the governor activated the Emergency Small Business Loan Program. We began accepting applications the very next day. And um, those applications are coming in. Um, the app, and we'll talk about how to complete those applications and what's required. But the most important thing that you should know is that process has already begun and um, you need to um, go ahead and start completing that application. So the Emergency Bridge Loan Program, it is a short-term interest-free working capital um, loan that is provided to bridge the gap 
between the time that disaster hits and when you decide how you're going to get relief to cover the, um, the, the economic um, injury that, that you have suffered due to the coronavirus. So it's, it's a short-term loan. It's not a grant. It must be repaid. Um, the office that um, administers the program is the Florida Department of Economic Opportunity in partnership and assistance through the Small Business Development Center Network and the Florida First Capital Finance Corporation. The, here are the basics for the loan. The appropriation right now is $50 million statewide. We do anticipate that that money will go quickly and we have been assured that there will be another round of appropriations because this is um, something that business owners have, you know, we've never seen any, any interruption in business to this level before. So we do anticipate that the appropriation, once this $50 million is uh, depleted, there will be more funds made available. The maximum amount per business is $50,000. And let's talk about that for just a quick second. It's not per applicant. So if you are a small business owner and you have two, three, four, five businesses, each one of those businesses is eligible for the maximum loan amount. Now, there is a caveat for special cases, you can get up to $100,000. And those special cases primarily involve larger businesses that may have um, more employees and they may need more working capital based on their um, financial history. So those, are, those decisions are made on a case-by-case -case basis. The term of the loan it is um, one year. You will have one year to repay the loan. There is no interest on the loan in year one. Now, the only limitation is there may be, you can only get one loan per eligible business. And the application deadline is May 8, 2020. And then there may be um, an extension to that depending on the demand for the emergency bridge loan. So here are a few things that you should know of, about the um, application and the application process. So the applicant um, are, have to be individuals. The loans are made to individuals who own the business, um, individually or collectively. At least 51% of an eligible, eligible business has to apply. So if you have a partner and your partner owns 30% and you own 70%, one of the, the person that owns 70% has to be on the application. If you have three partners and each of you own 33 and a third percent, at least two of you have to be on the application. So bottom line, at least 51% of the ownership team has to apply for the funds. Now, the use of the proceeds, um, at closing, you are required to sign an agreement that the loan proceeds will be used only for the purposes of maintaining or restarting the business um, in the disaster area. And there is no collateral. These loans are unsecured. So you don't, um, the, the state is not looking to take a mortgage on your house or a mortgage on any of your commercial real estate or any of your assets. It is unsecured. So the sources of repayment, because this is a bridge loan, and again, is designed to provide um, really fast um, uh, infusions of capital for those business who are, businesses who are suffering, um, you have to, on your application, indicate if you plan to apply for additional assistance through SBA, or through your conventional bank, or if you plan to use your working capital um, to repay the loan. But we do need to, you do need to identify how the loan will be repaid. Again, the loan must be repaid within one year or the loan goes into default. 
Now, if the loan goes into default, uh, the balance remaining on the loan will be um, at an interest rate of 12% per year until the loan is paid in full. If the loan is not paid in full, the loan is referred to a collection agency and the collection agencies will charge a fee anywhere from 13 to 15% on the outstanding balance. And also the loan, um, the collection agencies um, at their discretion could report um, the loan in default to the credit reporting agencies. Let's talk a little bit about eligibility. So in order to be eligible for the emergency bridge loan, the applicant or the business must be a for-profit privately held business that maintains its physical place in the state of Florida. Um, you have to have a minimum of two employees, but not more than 100 employees within the previous year of the declared disaster. Also, you, your employees could be 1099 employees. So if you have contract labor, you don't pay your employees, um, you know, you don't have them signed up as W-2 employees, but they're contract labor, you could be eligible if you have at least two 1099 employees. Now, we've also, um, one other provision is that um, because we um, administered this loan for Hurricane Michael or Hurricane Irma as well, um, those loans that were originally um, administered for those have to be paid in full in order for you to be eligible for the funds that are, are um, aimed to be used for the coronavirus crisis. The other um, aspect of the um, eligibility, you have to demonstrate that your business has suffered or is suffering significant economic injury and are unable to pay the ordinary obligations and operating expenses. So if you have a, a decrease in sales, um, if you have a restaurant and you are now operating at 20% capacity because of the regulations um, that are, uh, are being put in place um, by the governor's office, or if you have um, operated a daycare and um, parents are no longer bringing their children to the daycare, you could um, use those um, circumstances to, to indicate that you have suffered economic injury. If you've lost contracts, uh, where people are canceling contracts, if you own a hotel and you realize that people are, are not traveling to your hotel, um, all of those factors lead to economic injury. So how do we help you in this process? The Small Business Development Center, um, throughout this entire process, we help answer questions and let um, business owners know the different um, expectations for the loan program. Um, we pre-screen the applicants to make sure that they're eligible. We provide assistance in completing the application. We, um, once we receive the applications, we organize and facilitate a bridge loan, um, emergency bridge loan committee. Now this committee consists of bankers in this area, bankers in Tallahassee and Leon County. And so we receive the loans, we receive all the supporting documents, and then we um, pr uh, present those requests to our local loan committee. We are doing this right now on a weekly basis. The turnaround time is within one week. So we, we understand the urgency to get money in the hands of these businesses that are suffering. So we are really sensitive to the, the timeliness of, of this entire process. So it's not a long drawn out protracted process. As long as you have all of your information documented, we take that information and we try to get you, um, try to have the funds in your hands within at least five business days. We also serve as a point of contact um, throughout the application process. So if you have any questions after you submitted your application, just contact the um, business consultant that is assisting you in this process. 
and we can help you answer those questions or provide any other additional information that you might need. Once the loan is approved, we facilitate the closing of the loan. And then beyond that, we provide um, ongoing um, professional consulting services and strategic planning at no cost to the, the borrower or the applicant. The application itself, it is a seven page application. It is pretty straightforward. It will require you to provide some information about yourself, about your business, a few things that you would want to have when you're preparing this application. You would want to have access to your profit and loss statement. You would want to have access to your last two years tax returns, both personal and tax returns for the business. And then you would want to, um, in this application, demonstrate the dollar amount that you have um, suffered due to the downturn in business um, as a result of the coronavirus. So those are the things that you would need to have um, when completing this application. Again, if you get stuck or you don't understand or something seems unclear, please, please reach out to us and we can help you work through those issues on your application. Now, one of the other aspects, and, and again, if you have any questions about the emergency bridge loan, contact us and I'll provide you with uh, contact information at the end of this webinar. Now, we also lead um, in the coordination and administration of the federal assistance for um, emergencies through the SBA. Our partners, again, are the Department of Economic Opportunity and SBA. So the state directs um, the Florida SBDC to collaborate with SBA and coordinate federal business assistance um, during disasters, uh, including the establishment of business recovery centers. Because of the the uh, nature of the coronavirus, we have set up virtual business recovery centers. We are um, consulting with clients um, online through Zoom, um, over the telephone, and through email. Um, if, you, if you don't have access, you can FaceTime us, um, you can Skype, um, whatever uh, platform that, that you use, we can accommodate you. So we do have, um, we have set up virtual business recovery centers. We assist with the, um, we assist with the, the process of the emergency bridge loan. And again, it's a bridge loan, it's a short term solution. But then we also assist and with the application for the SBA business disaster loan. This is a longer term solution. The emergency bridge loan is to get you money that you need right now to make sure that you can um, stay afloat. However, the SBA disaster loan is a long-term solution that provides assistance for you. So the SBA disaster loan assistance program serves as an aid um, to um, counsel and assist and protect the interests of small businesses. It plays a critical role for people who have been impacted by disasters and SBA disaster loans are the primary federal disaster assistance loan program for the private sector, um, non-agricultural businesses impacted by disasters. So for this um, disaster, the, the COVID-19, it is primarily all economic injury. So uh, unlike Hurricane Michael or Hurricane Ermin, where SBA was lending based on um, both physical disaster and economic injury, in this um, di disaster declaration, SBA will only assist with economic injury. So you can, um, if you um, qualify and have and uh, are eligible. Um, SBA can provide up to $2 million in working capital for small business, small businesses and private nonprofit organizations. That is one distinction between the SBA program and the emergency bridge loan program 
um, nonprofits are eligible to receive funding through SBA. These loans are direct loans from SBA. So the, app the applicant must demonstrate that they have suffered substantial economic injury directly attributed to the coronavirus. Um, you have to also demonstrate that there is no other alternative for you to obtain credit anywhere um, on, on, at the conventional um, level. You have to have an acceptable credit history, um, acceptable to SBA, and you have to demonstrate your ability to repay all loans. And then in some cases, SBA will require you to pledge collateral if collateral is available. As I mentioned, the maximum loan amount is $2 million, um, and it could be higher for larger employ employers. The interest rate um, for um, small businesses is a fixed rate of 3.75%. For nonprofit organization, it is a fixed rate of 2.75%. And the loan terms are up to 30 years. And so the installment payments um, would correspond on the maturity of the loan and is based on the borrower's ability to repay. So in uh, most instances, SBA will take a look at your um, financial records to determine exactly how much you pay. And then they could extend the, uh, the term of the loan to make sure that the payments don't cause any further financial burdens. So we'll go through some of the frequently asked questions about SBA loans. Um, one of the most popular uh, um, questions is, what are the typical issues resulting in a decline? The most common reason for a decline is the lack of repayment ability. The business may not have um, sufficient cash flow to support um, current or any additional debt, or the, uh, the business and the business owner have unsatisfactory credit history. That could also play into the decision to decline the loan. However, if you are declined um, for a disaster loan, um, the next question is, do you have the opportunity to appeal? The answer is yes, you can appeal if you have been declined. You have to appeal, you have six months from the date that you have been declined to seek reconsideration from SBA. Um, so there's also an opportunity to appeal the second decline decision. So you have two different opportunities to appeal the decisions. And I would recommend if you are, um, if, if they, you are declined, I would definitely recommend appealing because sometimes um, other underwriters will look at it and they may have a different take on it. So it is definitely worth the effort to, to um, appeal um, that decision. Other questions are, are borrowers required to reap, to pay interest on the entire approved SBA disaster loan amount or just a portion that has been dispersed? Because these loans are simple interest loans, interest is calculated on the outstanding principal balance of the dispersed amount. In other words, if you were approved for $1.5 million and you've only drawn down a half a million dollars, $500,000, you're only paying interest on that half a million dollars. So you wouldn't pay interest on the full one and a half million dollars. So the application deadline for the um, economic injury disaster loan program through SBA is December 18th, 2020. Please make sure that you submit your application uh, inside of the deadline and don't wait to the last minute because it does, it is, um, it is an involved process. Um, you, it requires you to pull together um, a lot of different financial records. So don't wait to the last minute to apply. Um, if there's a likelihood that the client may need funding and um, if, if, if you really need the funds, I would say go ahead and start the process because again, 
it has been open. The, um, the economic injury loan for SBA has been open. So I would say go ahead and apply and um, make sure that you consult with your small business development center consultant um, before you apply because we can help you walk through that process. We can help you understand the application. We can help you pull together the information that is required as supporting documents. So the first step is to apply. And then in the case where um, there may be some property that you're pledging as collateral, second step would be SBA would have a, an appraisal or an assessment of that property verified and then a loan decision is made. And then the, the final step is the loan is closed and the funds are dispersed. Again, I reiterate, please make sure that you consult with an SBDC office before you apply because um, we can help you walk through some of the nuances of the application. Now, if you're outside of uh, the Tallahassee Leon area, um, there is a, we have a network of small business development centers located throughout the entire state of Florida. We cover all 67 counties. The SBDC at Florida A&M, we cover an eight county region in the Northwest Florida Big Bend area. We go as far west as Liberty and Franklin County and as far east as Madison and Taylor. If you are outside of those areas or if your business is located outside of those areas, there is assistance available through one of our sister centers. Now, if you have any questions, I know that's a lot of information to, to digest, but if you have any questions, please feel free to give us a call. Our main line here at the office is area, area 850-599-3407. You can email me with your questions directly. My email address is keith.bowers at famu.edu. And for more information, please visit our website at sbdcfamu.org. Thank you so much. And we hope that you reach out to us in the very near future. And um, we hope that you remain safe and um, your family remains safe as well. Thank you. Thank you, Keith. Um, thank you everyone um, for listening. Uh, we hope that you found this webinar useful for, to you. Um, please again, make sure to contact um, Keith at uh, his confirmation numbers here um, if you need any assistance, as well as please continue to follow us on our social sites at Tal Chamber on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram and LinkedIn as well as our resource page regarding the coronavirus, um, talchamber.com slash coronavirus. We are putting all sorts of information there, information on these loans, information uh, that other entities are hosting um, and resources for our local community. Uh, again, thank you guys and um, stay safe.